At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, and now you also get automatically entered into the Richard Kane Ferguson Playmat giveaway. What do we have? Pack 1, pick 1. Nahab is quite strong for mana 5-4, Trample. When it deals damage, we can discard any number of cards. So we can ditch extra lands, and then add a bunch of red mana, and draw a bunch of cards to replace those with. So, a pretty strong card. Wouldn't mind starting my draft with a Nahab. What else do we have? Some powerful uncommons. Dread Malkin, kind of a staple in the Sacrifice deck. Plays better in red black and red white where we have more sacrifice themes going on paradise druid is excellent as a two mana ramp creature that can also fix our mana so plays great in the multicolor green decks usually black green as kind of the base but uh, can spread out across multiple colors uh, vraska is also excellent and also pretty flexible goes in any black or green deck provides multiple death touch tokens that can threaten planeswalkers and then at the common slots, the only one that stands out is the Obnixil's Cruelty that can compete with some of these uncommons as a nice removal spell. Uh, I don't think I'm taking a Dread Malkin over one of these two uncommons. So that leaves us with Nahab, Paradise Druid, Vraska and Omnixil's Cruelty. And I think it's pretty close between all those. They all have their strengths and weaknesses. Taking the rare is always tempting. Don't get to play with rares as often as some of these uncommons. So after a first pick Nahab, what cards are we looking at here? Angrath would be a decent follow-up, since it could go in the same deck as Nahab at double red, and Angrath is quite strong by itself. What else? Deathsprout is pretty strong too. This would be more of a consideration had we started with the Paradise Druids as a card we can cast in kind of the black-green multicolor deck. Would have also been great had we first picked Vraska in maybe a black-green archetype. Angrath would also be an interesting pick after Vraska, since we can still cast it in a black deck. Regardless, any commons that stand out. Divine Arrow is pretty good removal. The Giant's okay. And then Bond of Insights is kind of a build around. It's a pretty narrow card as an early pick, in the sense that we really need to make sure we pick up enough uh, instants and sorceries to go with this. But it is powerful if we can make it work. But I'm probably leaning towards Angrath here. Just plays well alongside Nahab. Pretty flexible still. Even if we don't end up in the red somehow, we can still play this in any black deck as well. So it seems like both a flexible pick and a powerful pick, which is perfect for these early picks in the draft. You're just fuel for the fires of freedom. <laughs> All right, and this is a nice spot to maybe pick up a Jaya's Greeting, one of the better removal spells at common, dealing three damage and letting us cry one. Anything else in the pack that stands out? Bloom Hulk is also great. For mana 4-4 four, four, that proliferates, so excellent in any proliferate type deck. Although, I mean, red-green is still going to have some plus one counters, obviously, since there's so many plus one counters and loyalty counters floating around. But I think the bloom hole is going to be even better in a green-white deck where there's more plus one counters and proliferate synergies. Just take the powerful removal spell, keeps us in red, move on from there. All right, what do we have here? Now there are a nice removal spell in Spark Harvest. Uh, definitely one of the better commons. So that's a tempting pick. Anything else that stands out? Uh, Burning Prophet can be okay. Already plays well with uh, the Giant's Greeting and with Angrath, since it triggers off of any non-creature spell, not only instants and sorceries, like you might see in the past. So the Prophet is definitely a solid two drop as well, but I don't think we're taking it over Spark Harvest and we already have Angrath that kind of wants us to maybe play a little bit of black. So Spark Harvest seems like the perfect card to let us move into a second color. So yeah, let's do that. And now it might be a good time for the Burning Prophet. So we're fifth pick, best cards in the pack overall. Um, I mean, the Riders is okay in red-green. These blue cards are playable, but nothing exciting. This card is... More of a, a sideboard card than a great main deck card, but you could always main deck it if you want to. The spinner is playable, but nothing exciting. Same with Giant Growth. Silverwing is also playable, but unexciting, so I think uh, we're going with a Prophet here. Stick to red. A good 2-drop plays well with what we have so far. And uh, Angras Rampage. The Sacrifice 
a creature part is not exciting, the sacrifice, a planeswalker part is a lot more exciting, but the versatility of having both modes is nice. And of course we are in red-black so far, so it seems like a perfect fit. I also wouldn't mind a Manticore as a decent curve topper, definitely a playable card as well. I uh, don't think this is a deck that's going to want unlikely A too much, since we seem to be a little bit more controlling than really a beatdown deck. And the Soul team is a little bit vulnerable at one toughness. So unless we have multiple ways to push this through for damage, I'm not the biggest fan. So yeah, let's take the Rampage here and uh, move on. Alright, well, we mentioned earlier that Red Black sometimes has this kind of sacrifice sub-theme to it. And in that sense, the Grim Initiate could be nice, just as early Sacrifice Fodder, that provides multiple bodies for us to sacrifice to various effects. There's multiple creatures at common that can sacrifice creatures to generate an advantage. There's a 2-mana deal for damage that requires us to sacrifice a creature or planeswalker. So the Grim Initiate, while unassuming, can be pretty synergistic. Otherwise, we're looking at probably the Chain Whip Cyclops, which is okay, 5-mana 4-4 four, four with a relevant ability. But uh, I think we could end up with a nice synergistic deck, and in that deck the Grim Initiate is going to fit in a little bit better than the Cyclops, and the 5 drops are pretty replaceable, so we might pick up some more big dumb creatures to fill our curve with. Alright, Heartfire seems like a perfect pickup here. The one we were talking about when discussing Grim Initiate, so plays well with the whole Sacrifice theme. So let's take a Heartfire over Operative and Behemoth, which are pretty mediocre. And wow, the Dreadmall can wield. So getting it the uh, ninth pick is definitely a sign that Red Black seems to be a good place for us to be, since we got some pretty strong cards late. So I'll take the Dreadmalkin, and then we just need to make sure we pick up enough creatures that kind of generate Sacrifice Fodder like the 2-mana 1-2 that generates a 1-1 one, one zombie token would be perfect in this type of deck, where we now have both Dreadmalkin and Heartfire as ways to sacrifice some of our creatures. Don't mind picking up a Tithe Bearer Giant here, nice curve topper that replaces itself. And now we can take a Bond of Revival. Not an exciting card, but we might play it if we don't end up with more 5-drops, uh, I guess. I'll take a Kaya's Ghost Form, I don't think I'm playing it, not the biggest fan of the card. And we'll take this for the sideboard. Alright, so pretty happy with our first pack here. We've got some nice removal spells with Spark Harvest and Jaya's Greeting. Some good 4-drops here with Nahab and Angrath. Some good Curve Fillers, some nice Synergistic cards. The Spark Harvest also plays well with Sacrifice fodder, so another reason to want to pick up more. Well then, Oketra is a broken card. Even though things were going well in red-black, we might have to go out of our way to play white now. Just to play Oketra, because if we get to untap with an Oketra, it's usually game over. I'm kind of sad that we opened Oketra, to be honest, since even though it's a great card, that's probably going to win us a lot of games. I was kind of looking forward to drafting this nice synergistic red-black sacrifice deck. So if we take Okatra, what are we ditching? There's not much we can splash. Angrath, of course, we can still play regardless. Our red is looking slightly better than our black so far. So we could still pivot into like a red-white deck. What would we be taking if Okatra wasn't in this pack is, I guess, a discussion worth having. Obnixilis would be decent. Obnixilis is a weird card since it's pretty versatile in that you can both kill the opponent's creatures if you're very far ahead on board and you just want to pressure the opponent's life total, or if they just have a bomb you can't deal with otherwise, but you can always use it to destroy your own creatures as well, just to draw more cards. So it also kind of plays well in the whole sacrifice deck. If the Fallen could be playable after we take an Obnixilus maybe, as a way to get back both creatures and now two powerful Planeswalkers. Definitely need like two or three good planeswalkers in the deck for Aid the Fallen to be good in the deck. Otherwise it's kind of a mediocre way to get back a creature. Obnixilus would basically be the, the consideration if we weren't taking Oketra. But I think we probably have to take Oketra here. And then we can see 
whether or not red or black ends up being more open and which of the two colors we end up in here. All right, well, Feather could be a good excuse to move into red-white. Uh, there is also Obnixilus, of course, which would be nice in a black deck. But uh, yeah, even though we might not have a ton of synergy with Feather at the moment, just as a 3-4 flyer for 3 mana, it's not a bad card. And any incidental synergies we pick up make this card a lot better. Don't have a ton of synergy with the Cyclops yet, but that's definitely a strong card as well. Uh, there's Obnixilus, Divine Arrow is a nice white removal spell. Some other good playable white cards. I think I'm taking the Feather and then we can maybe pivot into red-white here. And be on the lookout for more red and white cards. Well, Jaya's pretty strong. Plays well in our potential red-white deck here. So that's definitely a consideration. Uh, Chandra's Pyrohelix could be nice too. The funny thing with Pyrohelix and Feather is that we can target our own creature with one of the points of damage from the Pyrohelix and our opponent with the other one, or maybe one of the opponent's creatures, and then we can get the Pyrohelix back with Feather. So that's a, an interesting synergy, but I don't think we're taking it over Jaya. The Spellgorger Weird is also an excellent red 3-drop here that we wouldn't mind, but uh, probably got to go with Jaya and hope to wheel one of these two cards, even though it's not very likely. And then we're slowly establishing ourselves in red-white here, although Mayhem Devil is also very strong in red-black, so they're definitely not making it easy, throwing all these powerful Mardu cards at us. But yeah, there's no easy way to splash for all these cards, since Oketra's double white, and Red Malkin's not really a card we want to splash. Spark Harvest is maybe splashable, but is a lot better if we can cast it for double black. This one we don't have to play. The Giant's potentially still splashable for just single black. Rampage, I'm also not too interested to splash. Let's uh, see how red-white looks like here. So we've got a Grim Initiate. At two we've got Burning Prophet, Hardfire and Greeting as removal. Feather at three. Nahab and Angrath at four. Okatra and Jaya at five. So definitely some very powerful cards. Just need to make sure we work on the early game part of our deck so we don't get run over by the opponent. So I don't think we're taking the Mayhem Devil, I think we want to start committing a little bit more to red-white. So that still leaves us with quite a few options. There's a Janice Pride Mate, don't have a ton of life gain at the moment. Uh, otherwise it's just a 2 mana 2-2, two -two, which isn't too exciting. If we can pick up a couple of life gain spells, then the Pride Mate becomes pretty exciting. There's a Defiant Strike to synergize with Feather, although usually it's not a card you would take highly. There's Honor the God Pharaoh, which is just fine filler. Tormenting Voice, get a 1-1 token isn't a bad effect. I guess there's a Stone Blades, which also works well with Feather. But we're not aggressive enough that we really want this type of combo trick. Defiant Strike at least kind of cantrips, so it's a low-cost card to include in the deck. But Stone Blades is a little bit more committal, and we want to be a nice focused aggressive deck that wants a combo trick like the Stone Blades. I guess there's also the Guild Globe if we wanted some mana fixing, but uh, I don't know if we can really make a three-color deck work. Since, again, some of these cards aren't really splashable. So I don't think we're really looking at the Guild Globe yet. Alright, we'll go with Honor God Pharaoh here. Ooh, I'm a big fan of the Belt's Rager. Nice 2-drop and fits perfectly in this deck. Anything else? Divine Arrow is also tempting. Good removal spell at 2 mana. So I think those are the main considerations. Had we taken the Ajani Sprite Mate, we would maybe be more interested in the Bulwark Giant. Still a playable card, but it's not exciting. And then I guess there's also Samut Sprint if we are looking more at Feather Synergies. Populous is fine, but I think this is between Divine Arrow and Rager. Alright, let's take a Rager. We're also way more committed to red than we are white, of course, so that also makes us more interested in the red cards and the, the white cards in case we somehow pivot back into red-black. Alright, Ancrop Invader. Also plays well with the whole Sacrifice theme, plays well alongside Grim Initiate. The Rager if we want to sacrifice it. There's also Rising Populous as a reasonable 3-drop. I think we're going to stick to the Invader and then look to pick up more Sacrifice fodder like more copies of Grim Initiate. Plays well with the Honor the God Pharaoh that leaves behind a 1-1 amass token that we don't mind sacrificing. 
I think I'm gonna start with the invader and then if we are presented with the same pick between invader and populace, I might pick the populace since then it synergizes with the invader we already have. But I think I'm gonna take the invader first. Another mayhem devil could have been our second one. So yeah, if we stuck to red black sacrifice instead of Okatra, we would have had an Obnixilus and we could have had two mayhem devils in the deck. So our deck would have been quite strong as well. But uh, maybe we can get some free wins with Okatra and that'll be worth it. There's an Assault team, which yeah, is playable, but nothing special. There's a Silver Wing, which is kind of in the same category. It does give us a Flyer, which is nice at pressuring opposing Planeswalkers. Don't think we're too interested in Guild Globe, since again, it's not like we're really trying to splash in this deck. Let's take a look here. So right now, the way our deck is set up would be something like this. So I've got some removal with Hard Fire and Greeting. Prophet and Rager at 2, Invader, Feather and Honor Godfather at 3, some powerful 4s and 5s. So definitely need to work on the early game part of our deck, uh, but there's no great cheap options available here other than Guild Globe. So we could take a Silver Wing, we could take an Assault Team. I think those are the main considerations. I guess the Assault Team plays pretty well alongside something like Angrath, giving all our creatures mana, making it more difficult to block. So I don't mind taking Assault Team in this type of deck. And the crunch is nice and aggressive. If we can lower the curve enough in our deck and pick up a few more 2-drops, then the crunch could be pretty strong. The griffin is also a nice 5-drop, 3 for flying for 5, although we already have 2 strong 5s. So I think we just want to lower the curve and take the crunch. And I don't mind an iron bully. Evasive 3-drop plays well in an aggressive deck. Don't think we want Prismite as a 2-1 or an Assailant as a 2-2 two, two for 2. Can probably do better. Let's just take a Bully. Alright, so now we are presented with the Populous pick again. There's also Wars Creature though, and I think we're taking the Wars Creature just because it's a 2-drop and we want to lower the curve of the deck. Otherwise Populous would be a fine pickup. But having some extra evasion in the deck as well to pressure Planeswalkers is useful. Alright, so now we could take a random Crow Vault as a 4 mana 2 5. Could take a random 2 mana 2 2, or we can take a Guild Globe kind of as a speculative pick in case we do end up splashing. I guess we'll take a Globe. And the Defiant Strike Wield, I will pick it up now over the Stone Blades. And a Giants as a 6 drop here. Alright, so moving into the final pack, what are we looking for? More cheap removal to go alongside Heartfire and Greeting. More Sacrifice fodder, like the Grim Initiate. More good 2-drops, basically. The top end of our deck looks okay. So, just need to work on the early game a little bit more. And what did we open? Jaya's Greeting would be excellent. Spellgorger Weird is an excellent 3-drop as well. How many non-creature spells do we have? It's got uh, 3 over here. We have Guild Globe. We've got Honor the God Pharaoh. Our two Planeswalkers. So the, the weird is okay. It's not insane in this deck. It's a lot better in like the blue red spells deck. There's also Sorin in case we wanted to splash black, which is definitely tempting as well. I think I'm just gonna stick to the Jaya's Greeting pick here and make sure we have a solid two color deck instead of getting too greedy. If we had a an Ajani Sprite mate, the Sorin would also be more tempting. I think I'm just sticking to the Jazz Greeting. Even though it's kind of a boring pick, I think it's probably for the best. Alright, and what do we have here? Pouncing Lynx is a nice aggressive 2-drop, looks good. 2-1 first rank on offense. And we do need more 2-drops. Cyclops Electromancer, we do have a few more. Inces and Sorceries, now with the second Jazz Greeting, still don't have a ton of them though. Just Greeting, times 2 Heartfire, uh, Defiant Strike and Honor the God Pharaoh. The Electromancer could be playable, but I'm not too excited about it at the moment, unless we pick up some more. So I'm probably gonna take the Lynx just for Curve. So there's a Power Helix, it's just a cheap removal spell that has a little bit of synergy with Feather. There's another Crunch. There's a Battalion, although we already have a decent amount of 3-drops, so it's not like I'm really 
looking for more, and we can probably pick up at least one more in this pack. Does play pretty well with our Jaya as well. If uh, we have a Jaya in play, then the Parahelix deals uh, 2 damage to 2 targets, so it gets a lot better. Because we have both the Feather Synergy and the Jaya Synergy, I think I'm liking the Parahelix over another Crunch here. And then hopefully we wheel one of these two 3-drops to add to our deck. Third Ogre is a pretty good one for mana 4-3 reach, with a little bit of upside. Could take a Manticore as a reasonable curve topper or another Pouncing Lynx. All uh, considerations here. Take another look at our curve. So I'm not sure if we're playing this Guild Globe. So I've got a decent amount of 2-drop creatures now, which is good. Could use um, another 3 perhaps. And I wouldn't mind another Curve Topper at some point, so Manticore would probably be an upgrade over the Giant in this deck. Ogre would be a nice play at 4. Lynx would be another 2-drop, which I wouldn't mind, so... Our deck is a little bit vulnerable to Flyers, so I wouldn't mind the uh, third Ogre to fill in here. Yeah, the first try, Compouncing Lynx, works well with our damage-based removal spell, since we can combine first strike with burn spells to finish off a larger creature from the opponent that's blocking the links. I think I'm leaning Ogre, but it's definitely close. Ogre is definitely an upgrade over Assault Team. Ooh, Tibalt is nice. So is Gideon's Triumph, so two very strong cards here for our deck. Which one do we prefer? Three mana, five loyalty, make some red devils that are also kind of sacrifice fodder, so they play well with the invader, they play well with the Heartfire. So Tybalt has some good synergies going for him as well, and also plays great alongside Jaya, since those uh, devils will deal two damage instead of just one. So they deal two damage when they're dealing combat damage, and then two additional damage when they die. So I think I want uh, Tybalt here. But Triumph would be good too. It's not fun in games until and now we're looking at maybe an Enforcer Griffin as another Curve Topper with Flying, or another Crunch as just a beefy 3-drop. I wouldn't mind getting rid of the Assault Team and the Bulwark Giant here. So if we can improve those slots, that would be an upgrade. Everything else looks good. So we're at basically 21 cards I'm happy to play. Yeah, I think I like the Griffin, could use a bit more evasion. And our 3-drops look pretty stacked already. Alright, now we can take another Pouncing Lynx if we want to. Another 2-drop. Don't think we need another Honor the God Pharaoh. Silverwing is playable, but not too exciting right now. So I'll take another Lynx. Alright, could have another one, or we can have a second Heartfire. There's definitely some diminishing returns going on with cards like Heartfire, since there's only so many creatures you can sacrifice sometimes. Now that we picked up a Tybalt, we've got a Grim Initiate that we don't mind sacking. Plays well with Honor the God Pharaoh. And of course we can always Heartfire, sacrificing a Planeswalker that's about to die anyway to the opponent's combat step. So, also gotta remember we can sacrifice Planeswalkers with this. So I think I like the Heartfire still. And I guess we'll take another Bully. Could also take the Bolt Band, maybe for the sideboard instead of the main deck. Don't have many creatures with power 4 or greater, but it could be an excellent sideboard card. Don't think we really need any of these other cards. Don't think I'm main decking another Invader, since we don't have that much Sacrifice Fodder but I could see bringing a second copy in, in some matchups. I doubt we'll need a sprint. Taken in common for the vault. Alright, so I think we successfully pivoted into red-white after starting with a nice red-black sacrifice deck, but the red-black deck would have been pretty strong too, since we definitely passed up on some powerful removal spells. We could have had two uh, Mayhem Devils, we could have had two Spark Harvests, some Obnixilus as well. So the red-black deck would have been very strong as well. But I'm pretty happy with where we ended up. So we just need to make one cut here to this deck. Could get away with playing one fewer land since it's not like our curve is insanely high. And we have Honor the God Pharaoh to help us draw as well. 
And then we can just cut a mountain, so we have eight and eight. All right, let's play some Okatra waiting room. All right, no white mana, but we don't need it at the moment. Got some early interaction with the Jaya's Greeting, which can also help us cry into Invader, into Nahab. Looks okay. All right. Well, now we're hoping to draw into a uh, planes for the Pouncing Lynx. No such luck. All right. I've got a Jaya's Greeting at the ready. Let's see if we can zap something. Kiora. Kiora, we sadly cannot kill with the Jazz Greeting. But we did pick up the planes. So do we want to play Invader or just play the Lynx? Having the red creature in play is better if we curve into a Jaya later, since we can go Invader into Nahab into maybe a Jaya. And it's more mana efficient to play Invader. All right, opponent on black green here with the Kiora, so they can have access to five mana. Does nothing, maybe holding up a removal spell. And the Grim Initiate was actually a nice pickup here since it plays well with the Invader and uh, the Heartfire. So we could just go Pouncing Lynx plus Initiate if we suspect our opponent holding up a removal spell for our Nahab. I think I like playing Initiate and Lynx here instead of Nahab, so might as well just attack first. Give them less information. If our opponent somehow pulled the trigger on removal on the invader, we would maybe just play Nahab instead. Pass a turn. And see what our opponent does. They did nothing with 4 mana. Can put a stop on upkeep in case we want to cast a Jazz Greeting before our draw step. Evolution Sage could be scary here. Puts a counter on Kiora. So the Sage we can kill. Ideally we can just kill it with Jaya, but then we need to draw land. Alright. Kiora's ramping. Three mana. And New Horizons, fair enough. So now the Sage doesn't die to Jaya, so we might as well just greeting on upkeep and improve our draw step. Don't think we want another hard fire since we're kind of running low on sacrifice fodder. Draw planes, so that lets us play a giant next turn. So we can run this out there. Do want to sand back some lands to discard to inhab, but Second planes and fifth land is still fine. Probably just attack Cura for five and say go. Definitely want to kill Cura now that they have a uh, new horizons in play, otherwise they get to make a stupid amount of mana. Still have a hard fire up. So we'll see here. Hopefully their next play dies to our Jaya Minus. Jaya is pretty good alongside these red creatures in play, dealing one more damage as well. Okatra would be an excellent draw. So we didn't have a perfect curve, we didn't have the Pouncing Links on turn 2, but we still managed to apply quite a bit of pressure here. Eight the Fallen, get back their creature and their Planeswalker, that's pretty good. But hopefully now Jaya can kill the Evolution Sage. Replace Kyora. They can untap the New Horizon lands, instead they go for the Crunch Wrangler first. Well, I'm still gonna Jaya Minus, I think. No need to hard fire anything. And now I might wanna keep the land in hand for Nahab. And we're killing the Cura here, thanks to the static ability on Jaya. <laughs> Dealt with Cura twice now. I've got a Jaya in play to answer the Sage. 
Your opponent gained a lot of virtual life here, but now they're pretty far behind on board. Ooh, casualties of war. That was effective. Explains why they played in such a passive way. Well, that was a blowout, so that destroyed our Jaya, our planes, and our invader. Well, I guess we'll follow up with the Nahab here after attacking for three. And now the question is, do we play out the mountain? I think I'm keeping it. All right, just evolution stage go. So I don't mind using the pyro helix to clear the blocker here. Although it only blocks the grim initiate, so we only get in one more damage than we would normally. So I guess we're fine to just attack with Nahab and Lynx and keep up our removal spells for now. Could also use the Bully to put a counter on the initiate. I think I'm just attacking first, see what happens. And I might actually discard the Bully since it's kind of a low impact 3 drop. And then look for a better one. And keep the Pyrohelix as an answer to the Sage and Hardfire to burn them out. Alright, Tibalt's Rager. I'll play that one. And then planes for now we can keep in hand, but we probably want to play out the second planes at some point. To let us cast Feather or Ocatra. But our opponent concedes. Alright. So. Pretty interesting game there. Casualties of War is definitely a good one to keep in mind for game 2 and 3 here. Anything we want to sideboard. I like our aggressive plan to help us pressure the opponent's Planeswalkers. Assault team could be okay, although our opponent did play some cheap creatures as well, like the Wrangler, which could jump in front of the Assault team, which isn't a great trade. We're gonna be on the draw now, so Pouncing Lynx gets a little bit worse. So we could make the case for cutting a Pouncing Lynx and then adding something like an Assault Team as a hasty 4-drop to pressure their Planeswalkers with. Uh, does Bolt Band do anything against them? Doesn't help against Casualties of War, that's for sure. So I think we're probably going to stay put. If we had seen more removal from our opponent, I would consider the Bolt Band, but we haven't. Alright, hand looks pretty good. 1-drop, 2-drop, 3-drop. Maybe 5-drop at some point. Yeah, Casualties has more than one target, so can't Bolt Band it. Ooh, hello. I think I'm still going to run out to Grim Initiate on turn one and just try and curve out here. Our opponent's going to be under enough pressure by the time we play Okatra that we don't really need to sandbag creatures, I don't think. Right, so just need one more land here, so we can play Ocatra on 5. Crunch on 3 here. Center Nurture can block our links, but it doesn't block the Crunch. I guess we have to suicide an Initiate if we want to attack with the Crunch here. It's probably worth it. Do we suicide the Lynx? Probably not. Yeah, let's attack. There's a chance they don't block, but yeah, if we if we wanted to bluff a burn spell, we should have attacked with everyone, because then we would also be attacking with the Lynx. Alright, opponent doesn't block anyway, so they're really fearing losing the Nurture. Alright, hopefully no casualties of war. Just gonna keep on attacking. Think I'm okay attacking with everyone now. Could also run out another creature beforehand to maybe bait out a removal spell so we don't lose too much tempo on putting Okatra back into our deck. Ooh, Awakening. Alright, our opponent got us pretty good here. Ambushes the crunch with their 9-9 land. So yeah, we probably don't have the time to wait around on the Soketra, just gotta run it out and hope they don't answer it. 
and then make a bunch of zombie tokens next turn. But yeah, we don't have any answers to Vitugazi. So we gotta brute force our way through or fly over with our feather and our griffin. Not a nurture. Alright, looks like Oketra might survive. A lasso tap reaver. So our opponent's got plenty of chum blockers. We also have chum blockers for the V2 Gassy here, if it attacks. Not this turn, but in future turns with the Grim Initiate. Alright, I'll take it since I don't really want to lose our Oketra here. Pyrohelix was a decent pickup since that can maybe take out some of the chum blockers and plays well alongside Feather. So what we can do is play Feather, get a zombie token, cast Pyrohelix targeting our own creature for one damage and the 1-1 one -one zombie token for another damage. And then we get the Pyrohelix back. And then I'm fine attacking with Oketra. But then I would probably want to use a Parahelix before so they don't get the chance to chum block with the 1-1 one -one here. Alright, so we'll target the token and this one, I guess. And attack. Interesting, they're not just jumping with the Lasso Type Reaver, instead deciding to uh, keep that one around. Not sure why. Alright, get our Pyro Helix back. And we'll see what happens. Happy to chum block the V2 Gassi with the Grim Initiate. Yeah, maybe your opponent forgot about Double Strike. It's definitely possible. Okatra has a lot of text. Surin. Alright. So now their V2 Gassi has lifelink. But we can just go after Sorin first to take away their lifelinking abilities if we want to. V2 Gassi stays back. Alright, let's play Griffin. And there's no need to cast the uh, Parahelix right now. But end of turn we can cast it and get it back right away. And uh, let's see here, we've got 6 power with our flyers. So no real reason to use a Parahelix on Surin unless we want to Parahelix Surin twice and attack it with one flyer. I guess we deal uh, one more damage to our opponent that way. I'll put a stop on second main here. Since I don't want to uh, wait until end step, otherwise we don't get our Power Helix back with Feather. Alright, so we have to cast it now. So we'll do one at Sorin, one at our zombie. How predictable. On top, get our Power Helix back. Jazz Greetings also pretty good here. Just gonna go after Sorin once again. We could consider attacking with Oketra into the V2 Gazi, and we can finish it off with a greeting. Don't know if that's really necessary here, we can just win with our flyers. Get Power Helix back. And this can essentially start dealing one damage to our opponent every turn. Tithe Barrow Giants. Second main, we can Parahelix again. Just dealing one to our opponent this time. Yeah, we could also use a greeting just to scry one. That's also something we can do. Do have to be careful that our opponent just doesn't kill the creature we target in response, because then uh, things could go poorly. Alright, opponent plays Kyura. That's fine. On times V2 Gazi, sure. So do we bother going after Kiora here? I guess we'll deal one at Kiora.
And then we'll use a greeting, just to scry here. Put that on the bottom. Alright, so upkeep, we could greeting again, just to improve our draw step. So I guess we'll use a greeting now. And probably tap our planes instead of our mountain. Not a greeting, seems fine. Do we have lethal? Let's see. If we clear the reaver, attack with everyone. Opponent's got two blockers. Block, block. Take 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I guess they're just dead. Alright, fair enough. So, can just close out the game here. Well, I was having fun recurring cards with Feather, but I guess if we can win, we should probably just win. The greeting does not deal damage to players, it only goes to creatures. But we should still have lethal here. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Alright, so definitely got to see the power of Oketra in that game. Feather also played pretty nicely with our Pyrohelix, getting some incidental value. Alright, so 1 0 so far, let's keep it up. A turn 2 creature, any third land gives us Bully, a red source gives us Crunch or Honor, and we can cycle Defiant Strike. I think we can keep. Also have the option of a turn 2 Pouncing Lynx now, which might be an improvement over War Creature in the early turns. Alright, Prophets. Could have cycled the Fine Strike just to draw a card, but now we get to play the Lynx, which can attack into the Prophet if we use the Fine Strike. Grim Initiates. Alright, that's going to make it difficult to attack into. Because uh, Grim Initiate has first strike as well. Alright, so attacking is no longer an option. Could of course play the Bully, put a counter on the Lynx and attack. Or we could just play the Crunch and then make that play next turn, which sounds better. Chandra's pretty good. It's you burning. At least they don't get to play that Angras Rampage. And go after Chandra for now. Opponent cannot double block the Lynx since we of course would take out the Burning Prophet in first strike. And then they're only left with one power first strike to deal damage to our Lynx, so. Putting the counter from the bully on the Lynx lets us attack safely. Alright, Goblin Assault Team. Probably want to block that one. And then they get to put a counter somewhere. They can put it on the Zombie, making it 2 2. That's okay if they put it on the Prophet, then the Defiant Strike becomes effective. So I don't mind trading here. Well, there's an Okatra. We're a few lands away from it, but uh, good to have in our back pocket. So yeah, let's send in both creatures at Chandra once again. And I'll expect a block from the Prophet this time.
Land is great. And now we get to decide what to do next. We can play Honor the God Pharaoh to ensure we hit more land drops for Oketra. And then discard probably the Burning Prophets. Alright, there we go. So next turn we're playing Oketra, and we've got a lot of creatures to follow up with. No Frasca's finisher, just a 3-2. Yeah, we could have also played a Prophet pre-combat, so we get to scry when we cast a Defiant Strike. It would have been reasonable too, although that signals a Defiant Strike even more, since we would normally not want to play the Prophet pre-combat, so then our opponent might have been more suspicious. Alright, so Chandra down. Hopefully no aid to Fallen to get it back. Play Oketra, which even survives Obanixel's Cruelty. But I imagine if her opponent had a Cruelty, we would have seen it, and her opponent packs him up after seeing Oketra. Alright, so against the Red Black, we saw Chandra, we saw some early blockers with Burning Prophet and Grim Initiates. Her opponent might have a few copies of Heartfire themselves. And Angrath's Rampage. Gotta watch out for the Vraska's finisher in future games as well. Anything we want to side in. We also saw the Goblin Assault team. Still don't have a great reason to want Bolt Band. We might want to consider cutting a Pouncing Link since it matches up poorly against the opponent's Grim Initiate and uh, Burning Prophets. And we're going to be on the draw now as well. So I could see cutting a Lynx. What do we add for it instead? The Assault team is also still pretty awkward against their Grim Initiates. So I'm not the biggest fan there. We could add another invader. We could add a random curve topper like the Bulwark Giant. Or a Light Shield as a reasonable blocker that can put a counter somewhere. I think I'll go with the Giant. We're going to be on the draw so we get to see an extra card. And the life gain could be relevant if opponents a pretty aggressive deck, which they seem to be. On the play with 16 lands, playing the Giant at 6 mana is a little sketchy. On the draw, it's a little bit more reasonable. Well then, can't keep a no-lander. This looks better. And try and scry into a land here. So even though this is not a plains, I think we have to keep this since we have Nahab and Third Ogre at 4. And maybe Nahab can get rid of this creature if we haven't drawn white mana by then. Do we kill the operative? I think we do since it's going to deal a little bit of damage in the meantime. And we can block it with Nahab or Turret Ogre. So I'll just kill it now before our opponent gets to untap. Could have decided to take two and then wait in case our opponent plays a three drop that we would rather kill instead with a Pyrohelix. That's also a consideration. Alright, Herald of the Dreadhorde, pretty good. Did hit our fourth land drop. So, probably just gonna play Nahab. And hope they don't kill it on the spot. Could have played the third ogre first to kind of uh, wait things out. Ooh, Bully was a nice pickup, so now we can put a counter on Nahab and attack past Herald and initiate. We are kind of going all in on one creature, but this creature can improve our draw. We're going to get a bunch of red mana from Nahab, so keeping up white mana seems reasonable. Bone takes six. And what do we get rid of? Definitely at least one, so we can play this creature. Don't have a ton of sack fodder for the invader, I guess. The bully we don't mind sacrificing. So I could see ditching just a third ogre, keep invader, or we can ditch ogre and invader and dig for our powerful bombs. Yeah, let's do that. 
All right, draw two lands instead. Not ideal, but oh well. I'll keep the lands in hand, or actually this creature's ability could come in handy. So I'll play the land just in case, and we probably need second planes anyway for a catch and feather. That way we have the option of playing our six land and using this creature next turn if we have to. But our opponent packs him up, all right. So they conceded early to uh, Noketra, and now Nahab was able to carry us. All right, so we're 2-0 and so far. Let's see if we can keep it up. Well, this might be another game where we win off the back of Oketra. Definitely an easy keep. That's kind of why we switched into white, so... Even though we kind of had to derail our draft a little bit, Oketra's definitely worth it. Got a Jazz Greeting at the ready. The easiest way to beat Onokatra is just by having an aggressive start and then having one removal spell to get rid of Onokatra temporarily. And then try and kill the opponent before Onokatra comes back a second time. Or just have a ton of evasive creatures. But this uh, Pegasus I'll gladly zap here. Even though we do have a third ogre coming up, which can maybe block it, it still seems like an efficient use of our mana. I'll bottom the profits. Doesn't seem like the most high impact play next turn. This is a little bit better. So we can play that discarding planes. I kind of want to keep the fifth land, but we're pretty likely to draw another land anyway. So I'll probably ditch the planes still. All right. Yeah, Prophet gives us an Alcatra trigger. Probably gonna draw a few creatures by then. All right, Dovin. That's okay. <laughs> it's funny that the minus one basically accomplishes the same thing as just taking one damage, but of course we could put more counters on the zombie army for all the opponent knows. All right, and now we can actually play Tybalt instead of Ogre, and then save the Ogre for after we play Oketra. I think that lines up a little bit better, since they have a Dovin that's going to plus on the Ogre anyway. So let's go ahead and play Tybalt. Next turn, play Oketra, and then take it from there. The Jaya is also pretty good with the Tybalt in play. Pride mates. That's okay. Does Dovin prevent the damage from the Devil dying? I think so. They're still gonna minus on the zombie here. Don't think we need to make any attacks. I'm happy staying back. So we'll just make another token, play Oketra, and see how they deal with it. Alright, so they'll need a removal spell right about now. Alright, Wanderer Strike, so they bought themselves a few turns. Proliferates onto Dovin. I will take action. Why not attack with the Devil? Just doesn't seem relevant enough. Would rather have it back on defense. Alright, so for now we can probably play the Jaya before playing the Ogre. And then Jaya powers up all our Devils as well. And saving our devils for after we play Jaya is also pretty tempting. Since now our devils deal 2 damage with uh, combat damage and also 2 damage when they die. So didn't really want to trade our devil tokens with the pride mate if they weren't going to grow it anytime soon. But it's got one card in hand. Ooh, finale of devastation for 5. What are they going to find? It's got to be something pretty big. Ooh, Tulsimir, that's a good one. So if they fight a devil, we still get to kill whatever fights, thanks to Jaya. So it's just a trade. 
I guess we'll attack. Opponent's probably going to take it, and then we can play Third Ogre. I guess we could also make a case for saving the Ogre for after Ocatron, but yeah. At this point, just playing a 3-6 double strike is good enough by itself. Could have left the Devil on defense, but I'm fine trading the Third Ogre. Alright, Nurture. No life gain thanks to Tybalt, so Devil can attack. I think we'll trade Devil for a Nurture here, seems okay. So, two damage dealt in combat and two more on death. And since we've already cast Honor the God Pharaoh, we still have a Nahab in our deck as reasons to keep lands. So I think we'll keep lands. Sartok. Alright, Lynx is a creature to trigger Oketra. I guess we're fine attacking with Oketra. And we can double block the Ceratok. Yeah, the game must be bugged, our opponent hasn't conceded yet. Alright, maybe they'll concede now. Alright, there we go. It was just delayed by a couple turns. So, against a green-white, bit of life gain, a bit of ramp. Dulcimer was pretty strong there. Uh, Pouncing Lynx does have an expiration date and that uh, the center nurture blocks it pretty well. Although, combined with our burn spells, we can still take it out. The invader can attack into the center nurturers if we sack one creature. Doesn't attack all that well into the Ceratok at 5 toughness. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we can really change much. That's too relevant here. Let's try again. I don't think I'm keeping this. Yeah, I can work with this. Yeah, I mean... It's kind of the name of the game. We're pretty far from casting it and getting any zombies, but once we do... We'll be in great shape. So, game plan acquired. Survive until we can get an Okatra down. And with double Jaya's greeting, we should be able to do so. Well, our deck named Okatra's Waiting Room for a reason. Angrath could be nice. We haven't seen any pump spells from our opponent at instant speed. So I think I'll attack and then probably gonna kill the wolf anyway. Let's just kill it now. And do we want to land? I think we do. Gives us Oketra on 5. Still have another greeting in case they play a center nurture, we can attack into it. Alright, trusted Pegasus. Playing Angrath into the Pegasus isn't great, so we're probably better off uh, using another greeting instead. I guess we won't show them the second planes yet, so they're maybe less afraid of Oketra. Pass the turn for now. Could have also considered using the greeting on upkeep, but I think I still wanted to draw the land there. Alright, so Pegasus attacks. I guess I'll take two for now, see what they play next. Alright, opponent does nothing. Don't need more lands. Alright, that's a creature, so let's attack. Arrow or Triumph? Arrow. Alright. Do they have the Wonder Strike again? 
Samuts. That doesn't kill Oketra. Yeah, kind of feels bad, but uh, it's kind of the reality of uh, War of the Spark Limited. Sometimes Oketra just wins the game on the spot. Time Stream Navigator could be a fun build round at some point. All right, so we're three and zero, and uh, yeah, most of our wins were just uh, Okatra making a few tokens and winning the game. And with all this cry from those Jaya's greetings, we get to dig pretty deep for our bombs. All right, hand looks nice. We even have the Pyrohelix plus Feather synergy, and we have double white for Feather on three. <laughs> this is getting pretty ridiculous. Well, we picked the right name for the deck. I'll say go for now. There's a chance we can kill a second creature here. Alright, nice. They even played it pre-combat, so now we get to kill... Do we kill the Vizier or the, the token? Eh. Let's just kill... The Vizier itself, I guess. Play Feather for now. Don't have double red for Nahab yet. Need one more land for Oketra. So Mountain would solve all our problems. There we go. And since we have a bully to follow up Orokatra, I think I'm okay playing the hub for now. Alright, so second rare, and now it's time for our mythic rare. Giants. It's pretty good. Can block or Nahab. So I'm not attacking into the Giants. If we were rare drafting we would have had a nice deck, but it appears to be pretty effective during gameplay as well. Arlen. Not bad. Go, my children. Fight. We even have the synergy of Bully plus Heartfire here. So we can put a counter on Feather or we can put a counter on Nahab. And then use Heartfire to kind of clear a path for Nahab. I guess I'll put it on Nahab. Could also put it on Oketra, but just gonna send Feather at Arlen, Oketra at Arlen, and then Nahab at our opponents. Nahab also triggers on Planeswalkers, but I think sending two at, o at Arlen is enough. And then we can use Heartfire to maybe kill a blocker to blow up any double blocks. Yeah, putting in a counter on Okatra is nice because of double strike. But putting a counter on the hub means that it can attack past the giant. Alright, so what's happening here? We're just gonna kill the Centaur Nurture with a heart fire. Sacking the bully. Okatra kills giants. Opponent takes six. Discard our hands. And uh, we're one mana short of playing the ogre, so we'll just pass a turn for now. Opponent can cash in Arlen for another wolf, but uh, that's game over. Alright. Well, we had a pretty ideal draw that game. 
The Lynx is not going to be able to attack very much. Did we see any targets for Bolt Band? We didn't. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a ton of sideboard options. I think we just resubmit. All right, we'll have to win it the fair way. Is this hand good enough? On the draw, we get to go initiate into Pyrohelix. Any third land gives us Crunch, and any fourth land with a Mountain gives us Angrath. Yeah, it's not amazing, but probably keepable. It's always nice to have an early creature to go alongside a Crunch. All right, let's get in. Don't think I'm using the Pyrohelix quite yet, since Angrath also means a crunch gains menace. So we can attack past the uh, Lazotep Reaver regardless. The Bolt could also be nice. I guess we won't show them the second planes yet. Could have also attacked with the initiate, and instead of playing Crunch, used Parahelix to kill both halves of the Reaver after dealing first rank damage to the Reaver. It doesn't seem necessary. Alright, Frasca. Using the Parahelix to kill the Death Touch token is pretty tempting. If we use a Parahelix right now, what happens? Um, opponent can chum block Crunch, Frasca takes one down to two. It's probably what's going to happen. If we play Angrath, Crunch is going to be double blocked by the Death Toucher and the 1-1. Frasca takes one, but we have an Angrath in play, which also makes it 2-2. So I actually don't hate just playing Angrath instead of using the Pyrohelix. And then the Pyrohelix can clean up the second Death Touch token that Frasca makes. Alright, so those die. And we'll make a token here. The only prize I desire is your head. And now if we draw fifth land for Jaya or Griffin, we've got a ton of options, otherwise we're looking at Parahelix and Tybalt. And they're gonna kill our token, make a 2-2. And they can hit Angrath for one if they want to. Keep your friends close. Kill your enemies. Fire and fury. We can just play Jaya, kill the 2-2, keep our initiate on defense, cash in Angrath. Yeah, let's just play Jaya, why not? Keep the initiate back, so we have two blockers for the Death Toucher, which does finish off Planeswalkers as soon as it deals damage to them. And the Sparrow Helix is looking great with Jaya in play, since now it can deal two damage to two targets. Ooh, Massacre Girl. It's gonna kill everything here. The problem now is that the Parahelix by itself doesn't kill the Massacre Girl since it would only deal 3 damage to it. Um, we could of course Parahelix plus use Jaya. Or we can just Tybalt make a token, which I guess doesn't work since this has Menace. And then still keeping the... Jaya in place still quite valuable with uh, Tybalt and all the Devil tokens. And I think I'll keep land in hand in case we draw the God Pharaoh's discard draw to, or in the hub. Alright, Toll of the Evasion gets to take our Griffin, sadly. And we draw planes. So yeah, we could definitely still lose this one. Opponent's got three cards in hand, and we are down to nothing. Yeah, 
Yeah, we made a big mistake this game by not drawing Oketra. Alright, so we're gonna try and finish off Jaya. So we could trade with the Devil here, deal two to our opponent as well, and then keep o Jaya in play to go alongside the Devil. And then, of course, future red cards also get better with Jaya in play. More lands, I guess I'll play out one now. And uh, I guess we'll attack. Alright, so got to draw some action. Crawl Stinger. Alright, more lands. The problem here is if we draw Gift of the God Pharaoh, we want to maybe be able to discard a land and still play a spell after drawing two. If we play Nahab, we just want more lands in hand to want to discard. So it's a fine balance here between playing out lands and keeping them in hand. I think I'll play out one more. Alright, we'll trade. Alright, Pouncing Lynx, not great here. There's also the argument for keeping a Pouncing Lynx in hand in case we top deck Oketra. Alright, time to let Jaya go. Tithe Bear Giant. Alright, Feather gives us an avenue. Yeah, the games are a lot more difficult when we don't draw our Mythic Rare. Forced Landing. Alright, so that probably came out of the sideboard after seeing Feather in the first game. Don't know if they saw a second flyer. But now between Griffin and Feather, they're probably going to keep it in. So that explains why our opponent didn't do much in the previous turns, because they had a bunch of situational cards in hand. Alright, so it's not looking good for this game. Not going to show them anything else. And then we'll have to reconsider our sideboard plan for game 3. Not like we really saw many additional cards here. That would change our game plan significantly. Massacre Girl, definitely a bomb as well. And pretty good against some of our token makers. Defiant Strike can cycle that on one of the opponent's creatures who draw a card. I don't think there's anything that saves us. So I'll uh, keep it in hand for now. Alright, so... Definitely don't want to let the opponent hit their 6 mana and uh, be able to leverage some of these powerful cards, because then we're going to get in trouble. So, got to keep up the pressure early, I think and then hope to kind of out-aggro them, and then draw a bomb at the right time. Any changes? Now that we're on the play, the Pouncing Lynx gets a bit better as well. Alright, let's uh, try again. Be on the play. Yep, that's a mulligan. That one we can try and keep. Scry into an Oketra. I tried. Well, I'm glad with our decision of uh, playing 16 lands eventually, because uh seem to be hitting quite a few land pockets. Ooh, Leyline Prowler. More lands, so this is lifelink as well. So we're not even winning the race. How likely is your opponent to block the Grim Initiative if we attack? Probably not very likely, but I think I waited a little bit too long and now our opponent might call our bluff. 
No need to show them the second planes, they might cast a toll of the invasion trying to snipe on Oketra. Although in that case maybe we do play the planes. It's probably the best way we have to win this game is their opponent casting toll of the invasion this turn, seeing a handful of lands, not progressing their board and then top decking Oketra next turn. So that happens. Alright, the second part of that statement didn't quite uh, come to fruition. Didn't we also scry a land to the bottom? We did. Alright, well, if we draw God Pharaoh now, it's gonna be nice. So 3-3 three, three Death Touch now. Alright, do we want to double block? I guess that's fine. Alright, there we go. Let's discard a mountain. And play our creature. No attacks. They might use their force landing on this creature instead of another toll of the invasion. They probably brought one in out of the sideboard at least to try and answer our Oketra. Instead they keep uh, dealing with our griffin. Force landing in the second game, now Toll of the Invasion. Enforcer Griffin can't catch a break. We have double Jaya's Greeting, which can answer this. So I'll just take two for now. So are we even attacking with this creature? Could also use the ability on defense to pump the 2-2 two -two zombie. Yeah, let's attack. And we'll keep up one of each, although I guess they know our hand, so it doesn't matter. Still want to keep land in hand, I think, in case we draw or Nahab, which can discard cards and find more action. And yeah, we're uh, waiting for an Oketra. What else do we want to draw? Yeah, mostly just Oketra. Jazz greeting for the Prowler. That sprout as well. Opponent's deck looked pretty good. Some good quality cards. If we had seen that sprout in the previous games, we could have considered bringing in Bolt Band out of the sideboard. No good blocks available. The Bolt's Rager is a decent mana sink. Might want to keep this creature back. Getting a one damage at this point is not too relevant, just gotta make sure to protect our life total. So we can try and trade the Rager for some of the opponent's death touch creatures. And we can take out the Vizier on the way out. Or we could block the Leyline Prowler with our 2-2. And then use the Rager to finish off the Leyline Prowler. Uh, that's a little bit risky for opponent as instant speed removal, since that could mess up our blocking situation. But at this point, I think we are kind of desperate. And the Prowler is a lot more relevant than the Vizier, I think. The trade happens. Prowler down. And what's their follow up? Nothing. Draw Feather. Alright, let's get in there. I'm suspecting a forced landing might be in our future. Yep, there we go. 
So we ended up trading one damage for one damage, which is not ideal. So we could have considered not attacking with uh, the feather, or rather the screecher, and keep the screecher back to block the vizier in case they dealt with the feather. We'll just say go for now. All right. I mean, if our opponent doesn't add anything to the board, and we can draw one of our bombs soon, Nahab or Oketra, we still have a chance. But if they play one of those powerful six drops, we're gonna fall behind. Aid the Fallen, get back Prowler. All right. Could have been worse. So we can just pass a turn now. And then we can trade the links with the Prowler after pumping our team with a Screecher. I guess a Screecher only pumps other creatures, but that's still good enough. Alright. Prowler gone once again. And uh, still gonna pass a turn here. And they might start attacking with the evolution stage now. That's a problem. So we've got seven lands left in 22, or rather six in 22, since we discarded one. So we're definitely due some uh, spells here. Sadly, Screecher doesn't pump itself. <laughs> Is this Momir? Looks like it. If we draw on the hub, we've got a lot of stuff to discard, that's for sure. Yeah, I'll trade. Opponent's got to be holding a few lands as well here. Or maybe some removal spells that they're sandbagging out of fear for uh, Oketra. Alright, well, I guess we'll pass a turn here. Got a full house in hand. Isn't full house a good hand? Might be playing the wrong game though. All right, well, when we drew our Oketra, we were able to defeat our opponent. When we didn't draw Oketra, we weren't so successful. Let's try again. All right, we'll be on the play. Hand looks reasonable. All right, Feather's a nice one. Up against the green, and what's their second color? Not a green black, it is. Face all the green black decks here. I think I'm still gonna lead with Feather. And we even have the Power Helix plus Feather combo where we can deal one damage to our own creature and then one damage to something else and get our Power Helix back. So don't mind seeing any one toughness creatures from our opponents. New Horizons instead. Alright, in this case, I'll probably just play the bully, put a counter on the initiates to diversify our threats a little bit. Well, Oketra was a good draw. Alright, prediction chat. Does our opponent give us a nice when we play Oketra? Let's find out in a second here. Feather down. It's a good one. We don't have a creature to follow up Oketra, so we don't get the zombie right away unless we draw a creature. All right, so wait for it. Nah, they didn't give us a nice. 
Ah, there we go. <laughs> Alright, no creature sadly, but we can just smash with everyone, and uh, if they don't chum block they're dead. In which case we might as well send the initiate. Because if they block the initiate they're still dead. Alright, GG's. Let's see here, another black green deck with Deathsprout and Giant. Seems to be pretty popular here. Any changes? Still not the biggest fan of Assault Team. Now I guess we can consider Bolt Band since we actually saw the Deathsprout in the first game. So that's a pretty good one to redirect. Although, again, we don't have a ton of 4-pound creatures, so... We'll have to get pretty lucky to let this line up where we have 4 mana up or have a single red up with a 4 power creature in play. So it might not always line up the way we want it to. But I think I'll bring it in over maybe one of our 2 drops. I guess I'll cut a Lynx on the draw which can be a little slow. Alright, hand looks reasonable enough. Need a planes off the top for this hand to be great. But any land gives us a solid chance and the greeting can help us cry as well. So looks good enough. Turn two. And this has triumph, alright. Still no second plane, sadly, so it's looking like a turn three. Crunch instead of Feather, which honestly might even be better. New Horizons, Serpoint's ramping. Ooh, this will be nice alongside Feather if we can get to it. Behemoth is a big blocker. Yeah, I mean, we don't really want to hard fire since then we all have to sacrifice a creature, so we're just trading a crunch, which is our only pressure. So maybe we cycle the Defiant Strike in hopes of drawing into, I guess, a Grim Initiate that we can sack to the hard fire. We can attack and then cast a hard fire before block, so keep the crunch and sack this creature, but then the crunch doesn't have a body to attack with. Maybe we don't even attack with the crunch and just keep up Jaya's Greeting and hard fire. Don't love trading when our hands all removal spells though. I think I'm just gonna attack with the Screecher. Play a land and say go. And then if they try and kill the Crunch, we get some value out of this Hardfire. That one we cannot kill with our removal spells. Alright, I mean, I think I'm gonna be patient. Hold on to the Defiant Strike still. Bolt Bands, now that's a spicy draw. Could line up pretty well. We'll attack. I think I'm okay trading the crunch for the crocodile since we don't have a great way of dealing with it otherwise. Maybe we should have cast the Defiant Strike on this creature just to dig deeper. Kind of a tricky spot here, drawing double heart fire was a little awkward. Alright. And a Davriel. So now what? <laughs> we could actually bolt bend Davriel's minus. I guess it's reasonable. Here, you discard. Discards a land. Ah, we didn't get them. I'll happily trade Crunch for Crocodile. We can use the Defiant Strike on Screecher to finish off Jang before it puts another counter on the Crocodile. Alright, there's a Plains. Comes at a bit of an awkward spot. I guess it might still be worth it to play Feather first. 
and then wait on this Defiant Strike to kind of combo off. And if they want to put another counter on Crocodile, hopefully we can save our Feather and then Feather plus Defiant Strike probably manages to beat the Crocodile. I think we just uh, attack here. Leave us alone. Play Feather, we have Hardfire up. So if they try and kill Feather, we can at least start fire and get some value. Alright, so Crocodile 7 5 hex proof now. Ashok, that's okay. And I think we're ditching the heart fire here. Perish the thought. And then we can finish off Davril with his creature. Feather can start going face with Defiant Strike, maybe. Happy trading Crunch for Behemoth. I think we trade. Yeah, we're gonna struggle dealing with the Crocodile, but we can try and race in the air with Defiant Strikes and whatever we draw from the Defiant Strikes. Of course, we could try and define Strike the Crunch to trade with the Crocodile, but in the meantime, we also need to deal with Behemoth, and I don't want to sack this creature so we can Heartfire the Behemoth. If we knew we were going to draw a cheap creature we can sack to the Heartfire, I might not make this block, since then we can save Crunch plus Define Strike to trade with Crocodile and then use Heartfire on the Behemoth, but we don't know what we're drawing. It's close, though. Could also make a case for saving the crunch and then sacking this creature anyway, since we can use Feather to pressure the Planeswalkers. But I would rather just uh, take out the Planeswalkers right now. Turret Ogre. And then we still have the planes to replay the fine strike here on the third ogre, which trades for the crocodile, so that kind of lined up perfectly. All right, it's kind of a suspicious attack. Did they draw instant speed removal? I mean, we could just take seven, because if we go for the defined strike on ogre and they kill the response, then we lose our ogre and our defined strike. So I think we take seven. Could definitely be a bluff as well, but I think we can afford to take seven. All right, Hotly, that's okay. We should use the strike second main, so we still get it back. Target our least useful creature. And draw a card, and then get it back. We don't want to wait until end of turn, otherwise we might not get our card back right away. I think I'm gonna keep the third ogre plus the fine strike on defense. Although I guess we can also maybe use a rager now to trade. Play rager, we can pump it twice, still have the fine strike up, and rager by itself trades for the crocodile, so the ogre can actually get in there. I guess we can use the defiant strike now. Another greeting. Play Rager. Yeah, there's also the argument for leaving Watley at one, since it actually makes a crocodile worse. Although I assume if our opponent put Watley in their deck, they're gonna have some good synergies with it. So we might regret not killing her while we can. Another New Horizons, so we kind of got punished for using the Defiant Strike last turn instead of using it for this turn. Because now the Rager is actually not enough to trade for the Crocodile. We might chum block it anyway, since we might be able to just outrace our opponent here. And with the Hardfire going to the face, we've got some more damage lined up. They might even keep the Crocodile on defense, but no opponent just scoops it up. Alright, so managed to win a game without Okatra, just gaining value with Feather instead. So that was pretty sweet as well. And we're 4-1. and one. 
on the play with an okay hand. I've got the heart fire to synergize with Honor the God Pharaoh. As a 1 1 we can sacrifice without feeling too bad about it. Alright, so even have a turn to worse creature. Not sure what we would discard with uh, Honor the God Pharaoh at this point. Probably this Grim Initiates. That answers that question. And try and hit some land drops. Alright. So next turn we can play Turd Ogre. Opponent on the Red Black with a Spark Reaper. A reasonable target for Hardfire. Spark Reaper, we want to try and kill while they're tapped out so they can't sacrifice it in response. Since the opponent can't sacrifice the Reaper itself with its own ability. So we don't want the opponent to gain value from their Reaper. But it might be better to play the Ogre first here to keep up the pressure on the board. Just attack for one. Play Ogre. And then next turn we can decide between Griffin or maybe Heartfire. Interesting attack with a Reaper. Could be a Vraska's finisher. We would be trading Ogre for a Reaper essentially. I guess something like a Chandra Spyro Helix, then finishing off Ogre and our 1 1 token. I think I'll take it. Could be the plus 2 plus 0 indestructible trick. Alright, just a Vraska's finisher. Of course, they still have the finisher in play, which can uh, block the third ogre. But we now have the option of using the hard fire to get rid of the finisher and get in a nice big chunk of damage. Or just play the griffin. Playing griffin might be better. And then we can maybe use this creature at some point to power up our ogre to get past the finisher. Yeah, I think I'll play the other flyer here. Now the only issue with kind of not using our hard fire in the early game is that it's going to be more likely their opponent has three mana up for their spark reaper and then they might get some value once we do try and kill their creatures. But they're probably still going to tap out here. Alright, lasso tap behemoth. So now the flyers can attack and we can use a hard fire on the behemoth. And I'll play out one more land for this creature's ability. But we can keep the other one in hand in case of an hub. Alright, so we'll see what they want to do next. Taskmaster, alright. Potentially annoying if they can start recurring some creatures. And they're under pressure from our flyers, so hopefully they can't answer the griffin. Ideally our opponent tries to kill, let's say, our turret ogre. Wow, that's aggressive. Hardfire to the face. It's kind of unexpected. Did they mean to target the ogre, but maybe misclicked? Well, now we can make the interesting play of using the hard fire on the taskmaster, pumping the profit so we can trade for the finisher. I don't even think we trade ogre for behemoth since we can attack them back for more. And then just jump with the army that we're gonna sack anyway. Hold on, can we kill our opponent if we just go face 7, 8, 12? Uh, we're one point short. I guess we can just take it, but I already blocked. Ah, well. I guess we could use this creature as well to pump our team. Because, yeah, this creature wouldn't be attacking, but we would be attacking with Ogre and Griffin, so we would actually still have lethal. So, yeah, we missed lethal here. Could have just... Uh, Pointed for another opponent's face, assuming they didn't have a follow-up play with one black mana or whatever. And then Screecher pumping the team, pumping Griffin and Ogre. Plus a 4 from the Hardfire would have been lethal. So hopefully we don't get punished. Still just gonna play Lynx and attack. And say go. Soren's Thirst, her opponent gains a bit of life back, and now an Angrath. Speed. 
Don't know if they can attack with a behemoth. It's a little risky. So they stay back. But uh, now the flyers kill them in two turns. Keep lands in hand because of Nahab. Alright, so hopefully no removal for Griffin. Hardfire doesn't kill us, we're only taking 9. So we didn't get punished for uh, our misstep. Definitely a weird play from the opponents, pointing that Hardfire at our face instead of trying to take out one of our creatures. If they did try and take out one of our creatures, we could have cast our Hardfire in response, sacrificing whichever creature they targeted. So uh, we would have been okay regardless. So against a red-black, pretty aggressive looking deck with finishers, spark reapers, hard fires, and grass. Uh, bolt bend could be good. Redirecting a hard fire. Don't mind it. And what do we take out? Could be that we want to shave on a lynx. Crunch could be a liability if we can't keep a creature in play to attack alongside it, but it still blocks. I think we take out the links on the draw, kind of how we sideboarded so far. Yeah, the Goblin Assault team could also be reasonable, but we can expect them to have a few of those Sacrifice Fodder type creatures as well, like Grim Initiates or potential Amass Tokens. So I don't love the Assault team, if that's the case. So I think this is a Mulligan. And every Mulligan we take in this deck also gives us another chance of having Okatra in our opening hand, so I don't feel too bad about it. And there we go. Bolt Band, we'll have to bottom since we kind of need a second plane and some more lands. And Lasso Tap Reaver. We can block with our Prophets for now. Alright. Don't know if we'll keep the Grim Initiate for after Okatra or if we run it out beforehand. Plays well with a hard fire, so I think we run out the Initiate anyway. Blocks there 1 1. I'm okay taking one from the Lasso Tap Reaver. Spark Reaper. We can Jaya's Greeting, which also helps us look for more lands. So we'll take one. As much as I like Feather, it doesn't come at a good time here. Need a second white source. And just lands in general. Alright, so... How greedy do we get? Like, we definitely need to keep Okatra, that's kind of our game plan. Uh, we could also try and keep Angrath and ditch the Heartfire, which is our only interactive spell at the moment. Or we can ditch the Angrath and keep the Heartfire to go alongside this Grim Initiate. I think we ditch the Heartfire. Alright, that's good. So now we're just one land away from Oketra. Alright, so we could double block. Is that worth it? Probably not. Just take one. Alright, and there's our land. So we can send both at Vraska. So let's get in there. And we've got this creature to make a zombie token right away. And a 3-6 double strike is still pretty nifty. And once we add Menace on top of double strike, We'll definitely have a way to close out the game. Vraska makes another Death Toucher. Herald. And a Mountain, so we get to play both creatures here, or both cards. Yeah, let's just unload here. Chase stokes the four. 
forge. The only prize I desire is your head. We can even use a screecher next turn to good effect. Pumping our team. And a Defiant Strike. We might want to consider attacking first. And then we can maybe use Angrath to make an extra zombie on defense instead of making a bigger one right now. The awkward thing about Defiant Strike is that if we keep this creature back, our opponent's already going to consider playing around a plus one plus one effect. And keep this creature back in case we want to use the ability. Seems okay. So we can make a Catra up to a 4-7. So it's not going to be easy for them to kill a Catra in combat. In fact, I don't think they even kill her if they block with everyone and her opponent scoops them up. Alright, sweet. Well, we definitely got our fair share of victories thanks to a Catra. So definitely worth it to switch into white after opening Okatra in our second pack there. So Okatra waiting room got the job done. Let's crack some packs. Finale of Devastation. If this were a pack one, pick one. I don't think Final of Devastation is amazing and limited. Um, Angrath and the Skydiver seem better to me, so does the Eternal and the Epiphany. So pretty stacked pack actually. All these cards are great. I think I'm leaning Angrath here since it's more flexible than the Merfolk Skydiver as an early pick, whereas the Skydiver kind of pigeonholes you into blue-green. Eternal might even be a better first pick than Skydiver, although that one's debatable since Skydiver is a lot more powerful, but uh, Eternal's a bit more flexible. I think I would take the Eternal over the Epiphany since there's quite a few card draw spells out there, even though Epiphany is great. Alright, I'll take an Oketra or whatever other mythic we want. Otherwise, I mean, not much to discuss here with two wild cards in the pack. And Deliverant Evil is not particularly great. Um, the multicolor cards are okay. Don't know if they're like good enough that you want to first pick them. Seems questionable. Uh, the Weird is quite strong in almost every red deck. So that's kind of a, a safe first pick. I think it's slightly better than Parahelix, but they're both pretty good. Elder Spell, a great sideboard card. Questionable main deck cards. Usually finds a target, but uh, it's not the most versatile card. Pack one, pick one, probably just taking the Outburst and hoping blue-red spells works out. Also a pretty splashable card. Alright, I'll take another Oketra, otherwise the Guard Mage is pretty sweet. Greetings, more flexible, so is the Even Eternal. But again, I, I think I would take the Eternal over the Epiphany. Karn's actually not amazing in Limited. It's nice if you can get like a statue out of the sideboard, for example or some other artifact that you don't necessarily want to main deck, but I don't think it's a high pick. Ugin's Conjurant, on the other hand, is quite excellent, so is Spark Harvest, Divine Arrow and Bloom Hulk, so pretty stacked pack outside of the rare. Not sure which one of these I prefer. Spark Harvest, a great removal spell, Bloom Hulk, nice threat, especially powerful in the green-white proliferate decks or band colored proliferate decks, but even outside of those colors, usually finds a few plus one plus one counters to proliferate, um, definitely taking Harvest over Arrow, much better removal spell. Conjurant also, a strong card, especially in the Proliferate archetypes. I guess Bloom Hulk still better than the Conjurant in that archetype, but of course the Conjurant's a lot more flexible and can go into any deck. So, another very interesting pack. And... This one's quite a bit weaker. This is between the Epiphany and Cura. Not sure which one I prefer. Cura can be pretty nice in some decks. Epiphany is 
kind of more flexible, even though Kira goes into both blue and green decks. You'll play Epiphany into any blue deck. Kira is a bit more of a build around card. And finally, Casualties of War, very powerful card, although not the easiest on the mana. So do need a bit of ramp and fixing to make this work. But uh, yeah, could be a fun first pick, why not? Alright, so that was a pretty fun draft. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.